Uh, hello, Professor Kuvarishan. Welcome to the show. Thank on behalf you. of uh, Team Bhavana, it's a great pleasure to invite you to speak to us on the uh, Silver Jubilee of uh, MTTS program held in uh, Regional Institute of Education, Mysore. Yeah. We will start from the very beginning. Uh, you said that there was an event that happened in 88 or 89. That's right, yeah. That kind of uh, could, could, could be looked at the early uh, or the genesis of MTTS. Right, yeah, right. Uh, what exactly happened? Well, there was a meeting conducted by, organized by Department of Atomic Energy. The title of the meeting was, uh, it was called Development of Mathematics. Then there were a lot of uh, people, mathematics people all over, across the country, they were all invited. I was working in a research institute at the time, so I was also sort of invited there. Then there was a discussion about the abysmal standards of education, especially at college at university level. And a uh, lot of discussions were happening. That was the time I said that, uh, you know, general opinion was that the teaching standards were very low and students have, are not prepared properly. That's when I mooted this idea. I just gave an outline. In fact, outline meaning just went about at most half an hour <coughs> to detail about what we are co come to call it as uh, MTTS methodology. Yeah, that was the time. That was the time. Yeah. Uh, you just mentioned that uh, the abysmal state of undergraduate education in Indian universities especially yeah. was the point that triggered all of you to start thinking yeah. about remedial measures yeah. to address the same. Looking back, and what exactly were, were, were those things that, that made you think that undergraduate education needs to be fixed, especially when it came to university education? What, what were the key points that you were trying to address? Yeah, the key points were, see, one has to understand when we say something abysmal standards of teaching, we, we should make one point clear. Mm. We are not blaming the teaching community. Absolutely. Uh, right? Right. It's a kind of combination of systemic failure of various sorts. So uh, that should be clear because some, you know, I am also a teacher, I should kind of go an apology to them, they should not get that blame. Okay. Right. The reason is that, you know, many of the time, it is exactly exam oriented hmm. and unrealistic syllabus. And the third thing is that, uh, you know, you kind of, uh, you don't have expertise, local expertise, mm -hmm. but you put too much of a syllabus, high, very high standard, and the students are not even prepared. Right. Then you start the whole thing. Correct. Right. And you don't have any kind of clear cut idea of how to deliver the thing. Right. So it becomes uh, such a uh, kind of uh, mess. Hmm. Okay, the outcome is very poor. Right. Right. Yeah. So you're saying that, uh, just to summarize and to ensure that uh, you know I got it right. Right. Uh, you're saying that the education system was more skewed towards the examination system, scoring even marks even now. Even now. Even now, scoring marks was taking precedence over actual learning and learning. understanding. Exactly. And uh, to extend that, uh, at one point of time, you have mentioned that uh, when it came to classroom pedagogy. Mm -hmm. You somehow had something against the so-called polished lectures, right? Uh, which really conveys nothing substantial to students. And this is almost uh, quoting you verbatim from uh, from your address. Uh, That's right. Right. Okay. Uh, you would your thoughts on that, and and why do you think that a polished lecture is actually not what students are actually looking for? Right. Yeah, if you have noticed in my thing, it was a garden. Why yes. I, when I pronounced this, mm. it was a little guarded. Mm. But let's go back. So, for example, in my early days, I've been teaching from B.Sc. onwards to my students. In fact, after my B.Sc., I, uh, for about three months, I taught in a so-called tutorial college right. to prepare the students for, you know, right. for to pass. So right. I knew. And when I joined uh, my research institute, I'm not mentioning that mm. anyway. So, my, many of my students, uh, juniors, I was lecturing. It was all very polished lecture because mm. your role models were all you. You say Mr. X, Miss Y, or Z is a great teacher. What we really mean is great teacher. That person comes very well prepared, explains very nicely, so you understand, so you feel happy. Okay. I was doing because they are my role models, so I also did that. But then one thing is, I'm a very keen observer from a childhood, so I see that you know I look for the eyes. Mm -hmm. The eyes tell you whether you are following or simply. The eyes don't lie. <laughs> don't lie. 
<laughs> so I followed. You want I take my pride myself? I'm giving you delivering very good lecture. I could see they are not following. It's not they are not good because at that institute is a kind of cream, the elitist, and very good students. So if they don't follow, there is something wrong. That means you are not engaging them. Right. You are not making them partner of partner of the knowledge. Okay, mm. acquiring knowledge. It's mm. essentially deliver. I deliver. You possibly receive it. Okay. Then I thought maybe I should change the plan. I see. So I slowly started experimenting. Okay. So, yeah. So you're you're saying that uh, you consciously wanted to move away from the established dogma that existed then. That uh, you come prepared to class and you deliver a spectacular lecture and the students go back with the impression that they have understood something yes, but, exactly, but exactly. when you actually look back and reflect you actually have gained nothing mm -hmm. so you thought you would rather have creative chaos yes. in your class yes. rather than uh, this organized well, uh, set of lectures which actually amounted to nothing yes. uh, is, is, is that a correct way to put it yeah but uh, it's not uh, i would not say chaos Okay. okay. There is a very, very deliberate order in the chaos. It's a very deliberate order uh, in the right. chaos. See, for example, some of the early people who are who have some kind of smattering of so-called Moose method. Mm -hmm. There is one popular educationist in the U.S. Mm -hmm. They try to dub our methodology. Oh, it's Moose method. It's not Moose method. It is not Moose method. Moose method is free will. Uh -huh. You just do. He doesn't direct you. Okay. Okay. That's mm -hmm. completely free will. You just say something. Then next person says something, and then another person says something, okay, nothing. You keep on doing, that's it. It's a cover just for its own sake. Whereas ours, we want, within a short pe period of time, within a certain time frame, we want the people to think and guided way. Okay. So that they, they should know what are the things. So sometimes it may be even leading, right. but you will do that. Okay. So there was some kind of a purpose and order. Deliberately put Deliberately. Deliberately. Yes. Uh, did this the injection of order at key points and places. Yeah. This was, you're saying, designed from the very beginning. It was designed from the very beginning. And it was intended to be that way. Yeah, it was intended. In fact, uh, my students like, I always give real life analogy. Mm -hmm. I would like to do that. Yeah. You might have seen in our uh, ruts, in our uh, temple ruts, right. the wheels will be there. Correct. People keep pulling. So right. it, uh, thousands of people are pulling. Right. So you cannot regulate its direction. Then what do you know is they have what they call it, some kind of a brake. Correct. Which will be like this, they will put, a person will put it and direct the wheel properly. Right. That's exactly what you're doing. Okay. You're, so you're essentially steering the momentum. Steering the movement. That's what you're doing. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, just a, an allied thought on the methodology. Uh, we got to know that uh, a Fulbright scholar by name is Christine Carter. Yeah. Uh, had uh, at some point of time said that MTTS in its, uh, in its pedagogy had done much more than what existed in the theoretical literature on pedagogy. That's right. Yeah. Perhaps she didn't put it this way, but okay. she essentially Essentially, this is what said she said. Right, right. So, this is something so new that there is nothing of a peer for MTTS anywhere in the world. That's is that a fair thing to say? Yeah, I would like to say that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but let the experts say that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you also consciously choose people in their second year of bachelors right. and uh, you want to let people be a little prepared for the abstraction that is inevitably designed in your curricula. Right. Uh, that so I suppose is a very conscious decision too. That's a conscious decision but uh, the addition was due to some other reason. It's not they are little prepared. Mm -hmm. We are ready to prepare. In fact, I find a kind of a, a blank thing is much easier for us to mold. <laughs> okay. Mm. So what we do is usually in the third year is when this kind of abstraction takes place. Mm. So we kind of prepare them for the third year rather than we require them come prepared. Okay. okay. So you put together the framework for the future prerequisite. And the second reason is suppose we do it at another point of time, little early, mm -hmm. then when they go back. It's a total disconnect. What they have d we have done, right. what is taking place in classroom is disconnect. Right. So naturally, youngsters 
will be more worried about what is happening in the class and exam. Right. So they will tend to forget all the kind of you know methodology, tricks, and you know training we are departed. Right. Right. So when they come back, okay, you will see the, which they were in that level mm -hmm. the first time they attended. Mm -hmm. After one year they come back, mm -hmm. then they will be just whereas when they left they were here. Okay. Okay. I see. Mm -hmm. I because this is again based on our uh, experiment. Mm -hmm. That's why I titled the conference an experiment. That what hmm. and inspired. Great. Yeah, yeah. The experiment so was. Sorry, you are saying that it is an experiment that worked and, and inspired. Inspired. Wonderful. Inspired for the reason it is an inspiration for all of us and inspiration for other disciplines also because because they want to emulate. Correct. That's why it is correct. 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 Like that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, coming to the actual classroom pedagogical style, you have said that. The conventional model of lecture style uh, uh, lecturing is is successful only if the audience is already well cultivated. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. and frequently they come to class without that prerequisite. They're not as well cultivated as you would like them to be. That's right. That's right. Which means that the alternative, which is ready and available, is something that is just ripe for discovery, experimentation making mistakes and knowledge emerging on a personal level via interaction. interaction. Yeah. Yes. Is, that, is, that, is, that a, is that a correct way to say the... Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Because that's one thing which there are... See, many times, this is a very common thing. At many places gathering in us, you must have all of you heard mathematics is mother of all sciences. Yes. Immediately I follow it, follow it up with a question. Is mathematics a science? Most often, there is a dead silence. Okay. Okay. Because somehow students and other people do not think mathematics is a science. That's very interesting because you have to really think about the way mathematics start and the way they perceive the so-called sciences mm -hmm. like physics, chemistry, or whatever. Mm. Okay. Mathematics, because of its utility. We all see there are a lot of things. We don't want to tell you why we arrived at this algorithm so that this achieves the purpose. Mm. Okay, you want we want to prepare the general large number of people, the complete po public and population, to use mathematics. Right. So essentially, it is a kind of what you call uh, cookbook recipes is what we give us in the term of algorithm. Mm. So they think that's what mathematics. Is. Whereas in other sciences, if you notice, you make observation. You try to find a pattern, you try to formulate a theory which explains the thing, then you right. conduct experiments, you right. make mistakes, you learn from mistakes, you modify, you conjecture, devise another experiment to expand your theory. All these things we do. It looks, none of these things happen in mathematics. It looks. It looks as though. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's utterly wrong. Right. And unfortunately, mass does not give that feeling. Okay. All these things were done by exactly the same way the mathematics is done. Hmm. And the MTTS will do that. Yeah. We'll uh, do that. Are you saying, Professor Kumaration, that the way mathematics is addressed at the university level is more like it is seen as a spectator sport? But you, but you want your your students to get their hands dirty. It's that's not right. a spectator sport. It that's is a participative right. sport. Right. Yes. Right. That's right. Is, is it correct? Yes. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Great. Uh, we come to the. Uh, aspects of actually running the MTTS program over the uh, last 25 years, you definitely did not want it to be elitist. You didn't want it to be available only to a few talented students. Exactly. You wanted it to open up and take in students who were motivated and passionate right. rather than being able right. because you felt that ability was the corollary of passion and motivation. Absolutely. Right. 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 So is is this how you chose your students? We chose our students from the beginning. In the beginning, since it was uh, the initial years, we just advertised. Okay. As I said, there was a group of people. So we selected. But unfortunately, what I found was that uh, the so-called students from the elite was uh, very high. The percentage was very high. Okay. We in, the initial, one. in the initial years? Initial years. Certainly. Mm -hmm. Two. See, there was one guy who was among uh, twice uh, gold medalist in international math Olympia. Wow. Mm. <laughs> okay. And so you just say something and he would have come up. 
Okay. Even the best, other best students will be, you know, right. will even try to understand what the questions were, what this guy would have solved. Right. Okay. That sense jitters to the other people. Correct. Yeah. It gives them the impression that perhaps mathematics is not for people like that. Right. Exactly. That's not the case. That's, that's not, not the case. case. Mm. Right. You're right. In fact, that's one of the things I keep saying. If you look at the body of knowledge mm. the human race has produced, mm. be it mathematics or any, any kind of knowledge, I say that something like 99.9% .9 is generated by lesser mortals. <laughs> that's a fabulous statement. <laughs> okay. Only 0.1% required genius. Okay. With completely brilliant, radically different ideas or when you are stuck out, Dif opening a different vista, that kind of thing. But that's very rare phenomenon. That's why you, when you look at the history, you see one Einstein here, one among Descartes there, one Newton here, mm. like that. Mm. Or one Galva here. Mm. Okay. And of course, one uh, Gauss, you mathematician, wants to say that art too. <laughs> that kind of thing. Right. Right? Right. But the entire body of knowledge was built by lesser mortals like you and me. <laughs> right. So I keep that, no, I just say that to give confidence to students, you can also do that. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So they should not think only the uh, geniuses alone can do that. Right. Yeah. Uh, when you when we actually look back at uh, the mid nineties, uh, and th there was a there was a point of time when you took charge solely of the program. That's right. And then you saw that there was a sea change in the quality of the learning in the outcome. Right. Yeah. Uh, what is it that you did differently after the first few years of? experimentation. See, in the first few years, the, the standard established norms of instruction hours and tutorial circuits are signed. Hmm. Whereas in the beginning, as I said earlier, I wanted to be a participatory game right. in the classroom. Right. Okay. So, once somehow we are among, I became sole person to run, <laughs> then I uh, talked to the faculty. Okay. There won't be any uh, distinction between these two. Hmm. Okay. You ask questions, you make the students work, you at least a reasonable number of students are understood, not even 100 percent, 70 to 80 percent, that's good enough. You go, go to the next concept, next hmm. result, whatever you want to do. Hmm. Unless it happens, I don't want to go ahead. Okay. So, yeah, examples were done there, some typical exercises were solved hmm. before we went to the concept. Hmm. So, that also built a lot of kind of things. In fact, that's very strange. You can do a lot more in this process hmm. because what happens if I give instruction and let's say for some reason uh, the tutorial may not be on the same day, it may be next day, even on the same day. Right. But they, they would be bombarded with some other thing in between. Right. So when they come back, you still have to go back and recall what happened in the morning. Whereas this way it is not. You just did that, we explained it, and then you apply that here. Correct. Correct. Okay. Absolutely. So th that if makes them consolidate at the same time. Hmm. So that way we tend to cover a lot more. Right. In spite of, I mean, seemingly it's a very slow process, hmm. people are uh, always amazed. A typical MPTS course more often covers three fourths of any semester course. Yeah. In a typical university where it's a rank, you know, polished delivery of lectures. Even though it runs for a much shorter fraction much of shorter, the time. Much shorter. Yeah. It's quite remarkable because if you look back at the statistics of the program, uh, nearly 4,500 students have gone past That's right. the corridors of the NTTS portals and uh, many of them have engaged themselves with mathematics at research level. They have moved on to teacher roles, mentor roles. Right. They, have, they have lived and breathed mathematics which is what you initially and always wanted. Right. right. So that must be very satisfying indeed. Yeah, extremely. Extremely. Extreme. Yeah. And you have, is, I want to, I want to look at the demographics of the student population, it appears as though a particular gender is uh, the leading gender here. The, certainly the last among uh, <laughs> five to seven years. I see. Yeah. But that has nothing to do with the MPTS alone. Okay. If you go to, uh, can you say the gender also? Absolutely. Okay, right. right. <laughs> okay. See, if you actually go to now lots of colleges and universities, you know, BSc Mathematics or MSc Mathematics, you will see majority are girls. Right. Okay. Even in the late uh, 90s, I can quote one example in Mumbai University. We had uh, two batches, 140 students, which split into two batches. Okay. You know, and uh, 
in one batch you know the, the majority was girls in one batch unfortunately only three boys were there <laughs> okay? okay two boys got some job and one boy said i am the only boy so he quit <laughs> so naturally if that's a kind of common plus scenario you can expect the participation by girls in uh, the mtts will also be a reflection of the reality in the, the, in, the in the society out there right, right. right. so right. it's not you know you, we we are certainly deliberate we want to encourage the girls soon but right. but it's not simply that we went out of our way to do that yes, that's what i want to say okay yeah uh, looking back all these years and looking at not just moments of triumph and satisfaction but looking at moments of despair and what was there at any point of time a moment where you thought now i want to just throw in the towel uh that uh, almost happens here every year every year yeah at least last 10 years okay yeah I last certain uh -huh. yeah. may i know why that happened and uh, what oh. what what were the events that led to that it's a combination of various things the first and foremost was that uh, finding suitable place to run the program mm. second thing was as i mentioned in my inauguration the catering problem okay we are ready to pay we pay but uh, catering is not available mm. and the third thing is the kind of the so called elite institutes who are the major beneficiaries of our program are least bothered about this they are not willing to engage with them they do not they okay. do not want to do it. Mm. so that and the fourth one is alumni themselves okay okay because it's a 15 year okay by then they will, we should at least produce 100 or phd's were under the girls at the time now it's about 400 right so i expected at least there's reasonable portion will come back to teach in mtts correct because all of us are getting old so when we should pay you know young generation should come and take over with new ideas possible right they should take over in fact they should say we don't want you what do you cover around here <laughs> okay it was not happened you know now it's not mm -hmm. it's okay better 50% but that's not enough okay yeah, yeah. so these are the things i kind of uh, really mm -hmm. thought of yes we are uh, stopping it okay we're giving up the entire organization yeah. okay okay but uh, clearly it looks as though the people whom you have trained and mentor are in no mood to give up they want to take this forward yes and the next 25 years appears as promising as the the previous 25 years were in fact it will be more glorious it will be more glorious more glorious than what and it will grow sure about that ah. okay ah. Yeah. yeah my pessimism always with la 95% 90% pes optimism to 5 10% because 10% pessimism makes you go far <laughs> to think of the bad things so that you do much better Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, wishing you the very best for the uh, coming part of your life. Wishing you health, happiness, and uh, acknowledging your signi significant contributions to MTTS. Pleasure talking to you, Professor. Thank Gary. you very much. Thank you very much. It has been a pleasure.